and so today's project is I'm going to install a cutoff for my solar panels. My uh, local utility has requested that I have a external um, switchable you know, uh, disconnect. So apparently opening this box and throwing these breakers and then locking the box is too much effort. So whatever, I'll go ahead and install what they're asking for. Uh, it's going to be a solar disconnect. The power is coming in here currently. So I'm going to cut the power off and undo this wiring. And then this was just a future, but this is going to be where the wire is going to come in. And then this is where the wire goes out for my first string, which is over there. And um, anyway, and I relocated my water filters uh, so that this would work. Anyway, so that's today's project. Oh, and uh, a word for my armchair critics. Thank you for your comments in advance. All right, so we're gonna cut that off and then we're verifying that this is dead. So there's no lights, so it means power is cut off. So let's get to work. I need to get this dead front off here. Next, we need to get uh, we need to get a smaller screwdriver. We're gonna disconnect these wires. All right, different screwdriver. That's not enough. There we go. All right, so now we're going to pull this out, but I want to get this straight. I want to cut. The So those don't get pulled. All right, so let me get these. That should be good enough to retrieve it. that goes in this area. But you know what? I want that on TA Take 10. I don't want that on this. This is a really great wire. I'm sure I'll find a use for it one day, but not today. Not today, Satan. using a pair of bolt cutters because I don't want to damage the other wires when I pull this back out. Well, maybe I'm going to show with a pair of bolt cutters. Well, maybe not. Not that pair of bolt cutters, that's for sure. 
at this pair of bolt cutters, which is cheap ass Harbor Freight ones. <clears throat> At least they cut. All right, so this has got to come back through here. And I just didn't want it to scratch any of my wiring that's in here or damage it. All right, so that's that one. I've got sensing wires that go back to the end phase, and I don't want them messed up. In fact, I think I'm going to stop and zip tie them. All right, so it's not necessary to turn the power off, but it is a lot safer to turn the power off. So I've turned the power off at the service entrance or main breaker box, which just makes it gives me a little bit more room in case I do something stupid I don't get shocked Last time I did this, I popped off that sub, sub panel breaker. That's exactly what I did. And again, this is why I decided that I would prefer to disconnect the power in order to work on this.
it's out now. So let me go turn the power back on. Oh, I guess it would help to put the subbreaker back in. wires out of there now it's time to start running new stuff but first I gotta prep where it goes All right, first things first this has got to come out it's in there tight so I'm just you know I'm just gonna cut this because it's in here really tight So I need to put this pipe adapter in and well, actually I need to see how it's gonna best fit first. So let's let's take care of So Home Depot sells this but they don't carry it. So I ordered the box off of Amazon because they were pretty competitive compared to everybody else. And um, I ended up ordering the uh, hub adapter, which is what this this threaded thing is that I'm putting in, or from Amazon as well. Now the box did come with a blanking plate. In theory, you could do this by hand, but that would hurt my hands, so I'm not doing that. So I just it's on there. So next, what we're going to do is screw this in, and I think that needs to be waterproof. So I'm water here but I don't want water getting into my box so I'm just gonna put thread sealant on it and tighten it together by hand now I am using blue pipe glue which eh, ideally it would be gray but you know this is the world we live in and it'll be fine I thought mm. now I need to figure out how the wire is gonna get in here it looks like it wants to come in from the bottom. So, there we go. Sorry, you guys didn't get to see that, but I basically just beat it into place, and now I'm going to tighten the thread at the top and then secure this box. the center line all right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position this so that this part here is flush with the bottom and I'm just gonna kind of swing this over and figure out where the center point is and that tells me where to drill my hole and this has not been secured yet I'll do that afterwards now the next thing I need to do I need to see what's on the other side of this wall so I've got some switches here, but it should be okay to bring that in right here. So I'm going to tape measure and double check this. I'm going to come in right in here somewhere. That's fine. No harm, no foul. And then we're going to route it up on the side and up and out. And back. So I'm going to go ahead and move my fire extinguisher. It needs to move anyway.
where that's at. Right where I said it would be. And I think this battery will finish. Ah, need a new battery. As a bonus, by finishing it from this side, it'll be a smooth hole on both sides. There we go. Next up, we need to open up the knockout that's on the bottom of this, so I'm gonna get a screwdriver and a hammer and take care of that. All right, so it should be the second ring, but we'll verify it. Yep, second ring, so it's gonna have to come out from the top. issue with this but I'm gonna go ahead and use it anyway because well I am so next we want to make sure this fits it doesn't we need to take out one more ring so we'll be right back all right so we're just gonna put the tip of the screwdriver on the ring we want to remove to take out way more than they're supposed to. So I'm going to see if I can just... Oh, yeah. So that took out way too much. This is why I really think those kind of knockouts suck. But it is what it is. And it's not... It's not going to be tight. A, a resizer from one inch to three quarter. Let me see what I'm so um I had to stop and go to Home Depot and I got these washers that reduce the size. You really only need to use one, but I'm gonna go ahead and use two, one on each side, because I have two. And so you can kind of see here what they do and and basically I'll show you on this side that's a perfect amount of stick out. It'll come through here and then go up there. And uh what we're going to do at this point is just go ahead and get this tightened up and start running some wire. Now I almost forgot, I also need to put in um, some screws and those aren't long enough. Got some longer screws, we're going to go ahead and get these in here.
So now what I'm gonna do is trim these in and get them get them out. And unfortunately, yeah, this is a two pole, so these need to be connected. This will pass through, and this will bond. And it does not look like I have a bonding screw in here, so. I'm Go ahead and put this on while I'm at it. Alright, so now I still do so we've come in here. And we're going up and it's it's just zip tied to the other wires because I need to get the right cable clamps But this will work for now. It's gonna get zip tied up there to bundle it And then it's gonna come up here and across there and over to the panel. So that's where I'm gonna start next In an ideal world this would be in conduit, but this isn't an ideal world and this will work This wall will get covered, so this will not be exposed wiring in the end. All right, so now for the fun part, gotta find the other end of it and start fishing through here. Just need some more zip ties just to keep it clean. Okay, so let me throw this in the recycle bin and move the camera. Up. We're going to make the cable go down the wall. We're using the same path the old cable was in, so it's just fine. Really, 
Wish I could get up in the behind there, but this will work. Plenty of cable. I originally was going to do this at 16 feet, but I decided at the last second, I told the guy at home to I said, yeah, just go ahead and make it 20 feet. I'm glad I did, because this is... This is uh, a little longer than I thought it was, but I'd rather have cable left over that I throw away for a few dollars than be short cable. And normally I don't like to zip tie electrical, but in a, it's really not a hurry thing. The idea is just keep it from moving around. Now this overhead cable will stay exposed. That's probably not code, but you know what? It'll be just fine. And you know, somebody doesn't like it, they can replace it themselves when I sell the house. I'm not worried about it. The overhead wire will stay exposed. Um, there's some minor concerns with bundling in terms of the ampacity, but all this stuff is so overrated. Like, I don't run any 15 amp circuits with the exception of lighting. Everything else is 20 amps. Um, and I just don't load my circuits up that much. This is a 60 amp run. It's got, you know, two or three amps of, of solar on it, but the breakers are 20, so. I'm, I'm running 60 amp because that's what the end phase instructions say to do and it's way overkill for what I'm actually running. And you know the good thing is underutilized breakers don't trip so there's really not a lot of harm in that. Alright we're getting to a point where this is going to require I want to go back behind here because I actually want to bundle all this nicely it's going to require routing the cable through here to get into there. We'll have a little bit of exposed cable. And it's there because I felt safe drilling a hole here. I didn't feel good drilling a hole up here. So at this point, I need to start routing the cable. So let me go get a knife because I want to get this off here because I'm going to do it one, one at a time. time because it's easier so I'm going to bend it into a little crook like this so that as I feed it through here I can get it around that bend and then I'm just going to take care to make sure that my cables come through here smoothly and without any issues again I'm going to bend a little hook and then just come through here like this I'm sure that those who are electricians probably would do this a lot nicer. Yeah, well, you know, it just is what it is. I still think this is pretty good compared to some of the crap that I see. Uh, so that one didn't have enough of a hook. I will end up putting some plates in here. And again, this wall is going to get closed up. So this will be enclosed. And at which point it'll be okay. I already know that I will get some cranky comments. That's fine. There's a lot of armchair experts out there. Sometimes wonder if you guys actually do anything besides sit and watch YouTube videos and bitch about what you see. But I don't care. Um, 
the comments are particularly nasty, they will get moderated out of existence. So at this point, I need to get into here. Now, I had a 60 amp breaker. It's a squared EQO, but it doesn't have the print on the handle. And there was an issue where there were some counterfeits out there, and this could be a counterfeit. Um, so it's only $12, so I went ahead and replaced it because I really want... So this breaker has got molded writing, and then it's got this on here. So I know this is a legitimate breaker. I don't have any reason to doubt this breaker. It's got some stuff molded on the side of it here but it doesn't have it printed on here, and I remember there was an issue. So I'm gonna replace this breaker out of an abundance of caution more than anything else. Before I went ahead and cut the power to the house. So first things first, I wanna pop this sub breaker out, and I'm just gonna push it out of my way. And then what I wanna do is I wanna route these in. You know, I should have done this one at a time. So I've got a white one. And it needs to go up here. Let's cut there. Just a little tricky and my hands don't work right as it is. I have carpal tunnel in both hands and they've been acting up lately because I've been doing a lot of stuff with them. Yeah, I'm going to go see if I can find my And I realize that there are some of you who do this with a live panel. I just don't see the need for the risk, so I shut the panel off because it gives me an extra margin of safety. And, you know, I don't feel like electrical is that difficult. It's just rather unforgiving. So safety takes a second. And accidents are instant. Let me just remind myself of that when I'm doing electrical work. So that's where I'm going to want that. And
hands makes my hands hurt. Backing off these gates and open them up so that when I put the wires in, they go in. And I gotta move this light over here. point we're just gonna kind of work around it I'm sure the lighting is horrible for you guys Now that it's in, go ahead and crank down on this. Actually, we can get this one in now. And this is a, I'm feeding a 200 amp panel in the house. And this is a great example of, of way additional capacity than what's needed. The whole house is only on 100 amp right now, so this is future proofed. All right. don't feel like it's in there right so let me jack with this a little bit there we go so at any rate there's a 200 amp sub panel inside the house 25 feet away um, Again, I've, I've run circuits that are way more capacity than what I ever anticipate will be used. Um, so eventually I'm gonna bring in a, t a 200 amp service to this location. And I want the capacity to run anything I want in the house and also have the capacity to run anything I want in the garage. So this is just how I've done it. And it's being fed as a sub panel from what was the original 125 amp service and I've downrated it to 100 amps because it's an old ITE panel and I don't trust it. I don't trust any further than I can throw it. And I don't think that the connection on the pole was done right. I had an electrician look at it at one point and he said that's not how the utility does it here. He said that's, that's a field rig. So anyway, this is just slowly working towards something in the future. At any Power's on. No big surprises. That's the way we like it. So next we're going to go back to working on the outside panel. Alright, i got to run power down to the disconnect switch, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to run it from above. So I'll show you when I'm done. Right, so next what we're going to do is we've got some large wire nuts, and this is the neutral, so it just passes through here. So we're just going to go ahead and wire nut this together.
and then we're gonna just tuck that back in there. All right. Actually, you know, but we do want to bring this ground in.
place. Now that's nice and out of the way, that's nice and out of the way. All that's where I want it. There's a little more line here than there really ought to be. I mean, I, I could take this off and shorten it, but there's no real need to. So what I wanna do now is get the ground plug connected in the disconnect. So what I've done, and you may have trouble seeing this, is I've added a ground lug to this box. There's not one and it needs to be grounded because if there was a current leak, it would be uh, hazardous to somebody throwing the switch. So we gotta give the, the stray current place to go back. So we're just gonna work this in here. And I've just used a number 10 screw to screw into one of the threaded holes in the box. You know, this isn't what I would consider ideal, but it will work and it should meet code. And then I've got some large wire nuts that I'm gonna use to just bond all this together. I want a little more exposed wire here. Jumper coming from the panel. This is the one that is coming from the, uh, the disconnect box and this is coming from the solar combiner. I'm gonna do this off camera because it's hurting my hands. Come back with a ground bar. Uh, I didn't like the lug. Um, and uh, anyway, so we're just gonna slip this in here. Need something to hold that with. Try and get this to go in nicely. Yeah, not gonna happen. Let's see how much more space. Oh, we got a little more space. So we're gonna trim this and start over. There's the first one. That's that's kind of what we're looking for. All right, and that's that's nice. So now we got to come back in here with this, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut this off and start over. My attempt to use a wire nut failed miserably on that. So let's get a nice clean. and then we'll carefully work this in. All right. There's one strand sticking out and that's technically not supposed to be like that. This is so oversized, it's not funny. All right, so that's good. That connects ground to the box, making this safer. 
Next, the issue is this. So I was going to do that, but you know, frankly, that's just another messy connection. So what I've decided to do instead is a splice, and then I will just electrical tape it. And that will keep my fill rate. I'm worried there's, you know, really not that much space in this box. And um, it's not really designed to be a junction box. That, that white wire I should have led through there. Um, or I should have used a three contact. Disconnect neutral wouldn't have really been ideal, but it wouldn't have hurt anything either. So we're going to... the same thing here where we clean up the end of this we need a little bit more copper exposed so we'll and I know there are better ways to do this but this is the tool I have and it does work The trick to that is just make sure not to um, dig into the strands. And you know, the only thing that's really a neutral load on this is the end phase controller, which draws all of, you know, five watts or so. It's just a little teeny tiny computer. So now what we're gonna do is clean this end up as well. That's more than we need, so we'll clip that as well. Yeah, that's about right. Neutral, and that means it needs to be isolated. So I'm going to put some electrical tape on it. This is a quality 3M electrical tape. It's kind of expensive because it's colored. And I'm just going to go for two layers here. That should be more than enough protection for what we're doing. And there we go. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Now what I need to do is connect that neutral in that upper box. We'll do that next. All right, so we want that to end there. So we're gonna go ahead and put our bends in place. And, you know, again, I'm sure there's a nicer way to do this. And actually, I want this wire back here because it will never... It will just not be messed with. professional but it will work oh, I'm gonna make me a nice ham and cheese sandwich and some potato chips for lunch which is what's next on my agenda after this Good. So uh, I've got one or two more things that I need to do and reinstall this. And the way to do this is to just slip this up here. All right, so that side went in. Hmm. 
doesn't seem to be engaged as tight as I'd like. All right, so that's the open position. There we go. All right, still got to put that dead front on. I think this clear dead front is a really cool thing. So that's good. Let's go turn some power on. All right, let's return to solar. So that powers up the disconnect. That powers that up. At which point the end phase controller is booting and this project is a wrap. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this interesting.